Today I'm going to show you how to stick text or images onto surfaces within your shop. I'll go over the tracking settings to use and how to make it look like the same material as the surface. And lastly I'll show you how to do it even if we have an object passing through the middle of our shop. So by the end of the video we would have covered everything you need to know about tracking to surfaces. Okay so here's our first shot and what we're going to do is I'm just going to put some text on the tennis courts there. So we'll come and create a new fusion clip and open in the fusion page. And what we're going to want to do is search for planar tracker. So if you hit shift and spacebar and search for planar tracker and select that. And what we want to do is draw around a section of our shot that has good tracking points. This being a tennis court, it has quite nice and clear tracking points being the lines. So I'm just going to draw around the service box here. and that should be enough for our shot. So let's have a look at the settings. So over here you'll see we have our operation mode set to track. The track is used to isolate and track movement over time. The steady mode removes all motion from your shot and is usually in preparation for some kind of paint or roto tasking prior to then unsteadying it again. The corner pin applies a matching perspective distortion to the foreground image you have. And then the stabilizing is good for getting unwanted vibrations out of a clip while retaining the overall camera motion that was intended. Now we can come down and look at our tracker settings. Here we have point, which is just going to pick the points and keep tracking those. Or we can choose hybrid point. And this one is a bit more advanced and we'll use this in another shot we tracked later in the video where an object comes in the way of our shot. But for now, for this one, we'll just use point. And for motion type, because our shot is top down, our text isn't going to be uh, changing perspective. All it's going to be doing is changing the size and the rotation. So we're just going to change this to translation, rotation, and scale. Now we can set this frame as our reference point and track forward. Cool, so it looks like it's done a pretty good job at tracking our points. Now it's time to add our text layer. So what we can do is we can hit text. I'm just going to put this one as court. We want to come into our planar tracker and create planar tracker transform. This basically exports the tracking settings from um, what we have just tracked and we're going to attach it to our text layer so as our drone goes up and rotates so does our text. We'll add a merge node here. Pipe in the planar transform into the merge. And one more thing we need to add to our text is a corner positioner because we want to be able to position our text exactly on the court how we need it. So you can see there that our text isn't quite in the position that we want it. Firstly, I'm going to go and change our font to something kind of big and bold. All right. So now if we zoom out a bit and have a look at our corner pins, all we're going to do is line these up to our tennis court here. And I'm going to be having my text coming from the top down. So I'm positioning them like so. And I want the text to obviously fill out the entire tennis court. There we go. So our text is in the tennis court. We can just position it how we want in the court with the layout settings. And now if we want to duplicate that again and put the word tennis over here, we can just highlight all these. Command C. Command V. We change this to tennis. And all we need to do, because it's already tracked, you can just move the text up like that. And so now if we play our shot, Our 
text is tracked to our surface. One last thing to do to make this look a bit better is blending our text to the surface material. So if we come down to merge and over in apply mode, come down to overlay, and we'll do the same on our other text. Now you can see it's kind of taken the surface of the court and applied that on our text. So the lines of the tennis court are coming through and over the top of our text. Next, we'll try an image on an angled surface. Okay, here's our next shot. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put an image or logo on the side of the pyramid here. So again, we're just going to search for our planar tracker. Make sure our settings are on track, point, and for this one, we're going to use perspective because as the drone moves away, the perspective of our logo will need to change at the same time. And for this, I'm just going to select a square section of the pyramid. I don't need to select the whole triangle plane for this. And we're going to track forward for that. Cool. And so now we're going to go grab our image. And to make this tutorial just mildly frustrating, I'm going to use a Premiere Pro logo for this. So we brought our logo in here and we're just going to do the same process as before. So we're going to create a planar transform, find where it is. Don't know why it's all the way over there. If you want to zoom out or zoom in on your node tree, you just hit command and scroll with the wheel. And we're going to add a merge node, join them together. Same thing again, we're going to add a corner positioner. And all we need to do is place this on our angled surface in a way that looks correct. Cool, there we go. So it's stuck on our surface on an angle, but we want to be able to make it look like it's actually been almost spray painted onto the side of the pyramid. So we want that surface material to come through our logo here. So what we do is we do the same thing, come down to overlay, and you'll see that that doesn't quite look that good. It's lost a lot of its natural color in the logo. I find if overlay is not working the best, darken is not a bad option to kind of keep the colors of your logo. But all you have to do is just pull back the blend a little bit so you can see the surface coming through. And there we have our Premiere Pro logo being used in a DaVinci Resolve tutorial. Great. The last example here is a bit more advanced where we want to place some text or an image on a surface that's partially covered by an object or person that would usually mess up our track. For this one, we're going to plug in what's called, or what I think is called an occlusion mask. I think I'm pronouncing that right. O occlusion, occlusion, occlusion mask. Yeah, into our planar tracker. So this will tell our planar tracker to ignore these details that will cause problems when trying to track. Okay, so here we have our shot and what we're gonna try and do is put a uh, image or logo on the surface behind him and have him walk past it. So we're gonna need to have two versions of our media in. So the first thing we need to do is add a background layer. So we can just hit this icon here, which is gonna add a background. We're gonna detach our media one and attach our background. And now here we're gonna reattach the media one to a merge node, just like nothing had ever happened. Now we're gonna copy this and paste it. So now we're gonna have two versions of our footage. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna mask out our person here before we plug it into our planar tracker. So I'm going to disconnect our background just so we can see what the mask is doing. And here I'm going to add a magic mask. And now I'm just going to draw over our subject. And I'm only disconnecting this just so I can see what we're doing with the mask, because if this was still connected, 
the entire background will still be showing. So it's just easier to disconnect this so you can see what you're doing with the mask. And we're just going to track forward. So what this is doing is it is generating our mask, which we're going to plug into planar tracker. And it's going to tell it to avoid tracking any of this person being input into the planar tracker. Now what we want to do is reattach our background and we're going to put in a planar tracker. Now we can come across and disconnect our magic mask, bring it over and then attach it to the white input of the planar tracker. So now what it's doing is anything in this magic mask is going to be ignored by the planar tracker when it's tracking our surface. So now we can go ahead and make our selection. I'm just going to choose selection here to track. We're going to keep our operation modes as track and we're going to change our tracker to hybrid point area. Set this as our reference frame and we'll track forward. And you can see how he just walks straight over all the tracking points. They don't even try to latch on to any details of him. Okay, for this one, I'm just going to add my image. I'm going to add another merge. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to have our background and our tracking, then our image placed on the surface, followed by our mask going over the top of our image as the man walks across our shot. So here I'm going to create a planar transform. And with our weird looking pizza graffiti guy, I can just come in and add a transform. And scale this to how big I want it to be on our background. Going to make it blend into our background so it looks like it's just been spray painted on. And then lastly we're just going to copy this magic mask and duplicate it. And if everything works he should walk straight over that graffiti just like so. Now I should say with any AI detection tool, they don't always get it right. There is a bit of trial and error with this sort of thing. That being said, I hope this video has helped you gain a better understanding about the planar tracker and tracking texts and images to objects. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. It's just under that big subscribe button, just, just there. And I'll see you in the next one.